Thank you, Mr. Scott, for uh, letting me visit with you and ask you a few questions. My pleasure. No problem. Um, what I wanted to first off is ask you was, uh, how did you know what, what field you were going to go into and what is your field? Well, my field is nursing. I'm a registered nurse. I've been on for 15 years. Uh, but prior to that, I was a machinist. Okay, for, so it's a switch. Yes, yeah, a big switch. Uh, probably, it was a little over 15 years mm -hmm. as a machinist. But I had a lot of nursing friends, and um, the economy was kind of up and down in the machinist field. And just kept getting more and more influence about being a nurse and the stability and helping people out and okay. a lot more talking and et cetera. So, so basically, I like it quite a bit. Yeah, so basically your friends and other members. Mm -hmm. Friends and my mother was a nurse too. Okay, your mother. Okay, mm -hmm. so family influence as well. Right. Okay. Um, briefly describe your formal education. Formal education um, as HCC for two years through the nursing program, which basically teaches you how to learn to be a nurse once you get out mm -hmm. because you have to go through an intense internship. Uh, it was three months long and then of course you continue to learn and learn. So you got a degree? What type of degree did you get? A social degree in nursing. Okay, okay. But you have to pass the same test as a baccalaureate degree in nursing as well. So it doesn't matter which one you go to, you still have to pay, take the same in class. There's no difference. So what type of communication course did you have to take? Now, Were there any required? Um, there were com uh, computer uh, courses that we had to take and uh, most of the English courses, but no real formal communication courses that I can remember. Okay. But there's a lot of communicating. Yeah. That's for sure. And what type of um, continuing education have you been involved in or is there any required for your job? Yes, every two years you have to have a minimum of 20 hours of continuing education. And sometimes if they want to um, really stress something like one year it was all about uh, nuclear biological chemical disaster so you had to have two years of that I mean two uh, hours of that okay uh, but every every two years you have to have and, and so that was basically about um, how to discard certain items that and be ready for emergency emergencies and whether it be nuclear biological or chemical okay uh, it's treating the patients and being ready and protecting yourself yeah Okay, so what do you like most about your job? Uh, what do I like most? Um, I think a lot of the reward is you catch people at their worst mm -hmm. and then you make them feel a lot better. Uh, but that can be a catch-22 because sometimes when you catch people at their worst, they really kind of take it out on you so you have to be ready for it. But okay. Generally, uh, you just make people feel a lot better. And, and what do you like least? Is there anything? What do I like least? Mm. I don't know. I hadn't thought about it too much. Uh -huh. It's a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um, in what situations or situation are communication pitfalls or challenges uh, most likely to occur, do you think? Because you, gotta that you have to communicate a lot in, mm -hmm. you know, in your field. You know, as far as letting your patients know what, what you're about to do, what, what's going on with them, what's the next step, right. and whatever. So, what do you think is some of the communication, you know, it, it says pitfalls, like what, what challenges, challenges what lapses where you're, you're not able to communicate effectively as you would like to be with your some, co-workers or uh, your well, patients. <laughs> <laughs> you said a lot then, but yeah. some... Um, of the challenges would be with uh, different educational backgrounds okay. because you have to be able to explain on a, uh, in layman's terms mm -hmm. and then some people have pretty high educational backgrounds and then you have to take it up a notch for them okay. and then you also have uh, different cultures that you have to be aware of you have to have a lot of um, cultural training because some cultures you can look at a person right in the eye like we're doing now and other ones they don't really want you to look, them, mm -hmm. look at them in the eye, they yeah. feel like it's a challenge and then some uh, you have to involve, figure out who's the matriarch of the family or the patriarch of the family and uh, okay. so there's some challenges involved in it. Have you had any uh, cultural competency training? Yes. To assist you? Yes. It's often in our um, uh, employment uh, profiles we have to 
they do it every year actually. We mm -hmm. call it cultural awareness or cultural sensitivity. So they do it in a computer-based pill training and mm -hmm. sometimes you go to meetings and they'll talk about it. And I think that's pretty good because with Houston being so big and growing, multicultural. Yeah, multicultural. Well, melting pot, as some would call it. Right, right. What are the challenges of effectively communicating with patients or other health care professionals from a different culture or ethnic background? And I know you mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. some don't want you to look at them in the eye or mm -hmm. you can't shake some people's hands. Right, right, right. Yeah. Or touch or whatever. So, I um, mean, you know, there are some races that they don't want males to take care of uh, the patient and uh, Again, you being a nurse, you know, a male nurse at that. Right, right, right. You so that's the challenges that in itself. Yeah. Uh, and race is always a, a factor, and people can say it's not, but it really is a factor in how you communicate with people and how they already perceive you. Uh huh. What are um? How do you handle the language barriers? Well, um, sometimes you can, uh, if they know a little bit of English and you know a little bit of something else, like mm -hmm. Spanish, you can kind of work your way through it, but for anything really uh, major or invasive, you have to call interpreter services so that legally you can make sure there's no mistakes made and they have mm -hmm. total understanding. Okay. And they assign the consent, or even if it's not a consent, consentable action, at least, you know, they have total understanding. Are you going to learn a second language? Have you? I'm playing with Spanish a little You're bit. I like to learn French okay. and something else, but I don't what, know if what, I have that much time. <laughs> what type of uh, assistance are you getting with that? Are you taking like Rosetta Stone or a class here or mm -hmm. there? Book reading. Book reading. Yeah, I took um, one semester of Spanish a long time ago and then self-study. Yeah, I've I taken like, tapes and things like that. I've taken like four semesters of Spanish. Oh, good, good. Close Next Zimbabwe. question. <laughs> Next question, and we didn't learn a thing. Uh, are brochures, pamphlets, and other materials provided? You know, in the, in that other language, you like posted around the hospital, for example. Or uh, it depends on what it is. Like if it's a um, disease process or a um, imaging process or some type of medical action, depending upon what it is um, and how common it is, they'll have some brochures pertaining to some things, but generally not everything is going to be in a different language. So that's what interpreter comes in. And what languages do you see most, you know, if... Uh, it would be English, English, Spanish, uh, Vietnamese, French. Uh, we see a lot of Chinese too, but I think the Spanish and the Vietnamese takes the top billing. Okay. Um, does gender play a role in how you communicate or how others communicate to you? I think it does. Um, generally, men, um, I think we say less words to each other mm -hmm. um, about even the, the same thing, uh, any procedure, or just in general, I think we say less words, and uh, they seem to have fewer questions okay. um, about things than most women do. Okay. That may sound biased and sexy, <laughs> but it, sexist, but it, it's... Is what you've noticed. Right, right. Does age uh, have impact on the job communication? Yes, it does, because in addition to uh, cultural awareness training, we also have age-specific training, because when they're kids, you have to talk to them in one uh, manner, and then as they're uh, adolescents and teenagers, you'll speak to them in one manner, and then um, and also take into consideration how soon um, People are trying to get back to work or back to school or mm -hmm. some people are more private, you know, and, and some of that is age and culture related. Okay. What role does uh, nonverbal communication cues play in the work environment? Oh, a lot. A lot. Because in that work environment or any environment, I mean, you have to be sort of in an open position to uh, make yourself more receptive or even to appear receptive opposed to being in a closed position. and. Uh, also, confidence and calmness helps uh, the patients as well. Okay. Because they pick on all, pick up on all the little nervousness, jitteriness, and et cetera. Okay. Um, do you have any kind of thoughts or advice to give me about your field, as far as communication is concerned? 
Well, just remember it's important to speak clear and concise. Um, not rattle on a lot because you confuse the person because they're already, they've got a lot of different things on their mind. So if you give too much information, it's not totally pertinent to their um, situation. It's just mm -hmm. going to give them more to be confused about. So. Okay. Have you ever had a, a situation, because you know, um, everybody knows that there's a patient you know, confidentiality clause or, or whatever, patient doctor mm -hmm. clause. Have you ever had a situation where a child was going through anything and that child wanted you to keep that private from the parent? No, I have not. Um, uh, I think it's probably more common with adults mm -hmm. than uh, children. And because, like I said, if you're into the hospital, I'm not supposed to really talk to your husband without your permission mm -hmm. or your spouse or vice versa so without family, another family member. Mm -hmm. Another family member, etc. Or another adult period. Okay, thank you for allowing me to interview you, Mr. Scott. It's oh, really welcome. appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you too.